Today we're going to be talking about the high bull and the low bear candles on the 15 minute charts. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Wednesday we've had some huge moves, again gold, uh, never disappointing. 50 pips almost every session in gold this week. Pound, pound Aussie. A uh, few traders challenged by the big move right off the gun. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about some tactics in terms of how to trade those, how to look for those types of setups. But today, high bull, low bear, it's something we've talked about in the past. We're going to get a little bit more in depth and we're going to look at some examples not only at the high and low of the day, we're going to look at some examples of bear candles in a strong up market. We're going to look at bear candles in a strong down market. How psychologically that can work to your advantage. Tactics to look at how you can trade those. But also how to use limit orders for certain opportunities when they present with the high bull and low bear. So stay tuned. We're going to get right into it. Before we do that again just say thank you. Tons of uh, traders yesterday right off the bat in the New York session. Uh, big moves on the pound, pound Aussie. Gold, explosive moves. We're going to look at a couple of very detailed examples of timings uh, on gold specifically and how they manipulate the price action trapping traders in the wrong direction and how some traders have been able to capitalize big time on some of those moves. So again thank you for hitting the like button. Turn on your notifications every single day trying to peel back the onion a bit more for traders. The big concepts, the big picture is the most important thing to understand. As we head into the new year we'll probably peel it back even more and get very fine tuned. We're going to sort of show a little bit of that today <clears throat> but it's important to understand the big structure, the simple steps and just master a couple of really simple setups and get consistent at 50 pips a day because these markets offer you unlimited opportunities. So let's get into it. High bull, low bear. If we are looking for a setup at the high or low of the day, and again we talk about why that is. Now I think a lot of people, I got a ton of emails last night about an hour into the New York session, screenshots, big trades on gold, pound, pound Aussie, and 15 minutes out with 50, 75, some traders 80 pips and more right off the bat. But the smart money worked from the top and the bottom. Now we're not going to get too complicated to talk about the algorithms and the timings and everything else but yesterday on goal we had a engulfment just outside of the 12 candle window. We had a creeping trend throughout the entire session. In the London Open they brought it down, made a new low, pulled it back and for the remainder of that session into the gap time we had a creeping trend which eventually hit the low of the day. They locked it in, came back for a third push at the beginning of the 12 candle window, the engulfment and then the explosive move back through to the high of the day. So again reminding yourself, and I said this yesterday, you are not missing out. There are trades every session. So if you feel like you've missed a move or you didn't catch it or you didn't see it, <clears throat> don't worry about that. Worry about what you're going to do in the next session, how you're going to recognize that opportunity. But the high bull and the low bear candle as the day evolves is a level that I pay attention to constantly because that's the area that based on the timing window and where we're at heading into the next 12 candle window gives me a lot of information if they have already locked in the high which means I want to be looking for sell signals or they've locked in the low and we're looking for buy signals. We had both of those heading into Europe London. We had a sell signal. We had the high of the day already locked in. We had a counter trend bar right off the open and then the continuation move into the London open for I don't know 25, 50 pips right off the bat. <clears throat> but then we had a low bear heading into the US session. Also reminding yourself that nobody gets a free lunch. So if you think you've missed the move, they are going to come back and get that first mouse. The first mouse always gets tapped out. They always get the, think of the mouse trap. 
They get to the mouse trap first, the second mouse gets the cheese. Why is that? Because the, sec the first mouse, if he's going to break even, and in some cases if you're at a peak formation, high or low, they might, might stop you out, but there are always are plenty of opportunities. And even if you've missed that, that first opportunity, if the market represents you with an ongoing swing into that move, once they've already cleared out the high or the low or locked it in, <clears throat> we want to stay in the direction of the peak formation. So I've said this before, once they put a peak formation in place, do not counter trend because if you counter trend that peak formation, you can now get caught into a market that can do a measured move against you. So instead of being 20 pips, which is sort of the average 15 minute candle, you could be looking at 20, 50, maybe 100 pip move counter trend against you. Again, my number one objective is to grow my trading business. So number one, I do not want to lose money. Number two, I want to focus on 90-10 opportunities, <clears throat> not 50-50. At any point during your trading day, if you are looking at the market and you are not sure but you want to get in, to me, <clears throat> that's 50-50. Okay, and that's a no-go zone for me. I am looking for markets where there's a 90-10 opportunity for me to enter the market with asymmetrical risk reward. What are those? Typically, they're gonna be a 33. Two pushes, a stop hunt, and then three pushes in the last leg with an engulfment. That may be on the 15 minute, again, as I mentioned, when we're at the high or the low, especially if they've come out one, two, three, that last candle at the high or the second last candle, I'll follow those bull candles up. If we get our last little candle and they engulf it with a bear candle or vice versa for the, the short, <clears throat> now I'm fighting for the best price. It might be at round numbers, it could be 75, it could be double zeros, whatever that may be, <clears throat> but that's on the one, two, three. That's at the high of the day or the low of the day. Now if we're going the other way and we have a market that's blowing off one, two, three, as we saw last night on the pound crosses, right heading into the 12 candle window, I believe it was the third candle was the first candle of the 12 candle window and then boom, now that's an unusual situation to see a 75 pip candle, but what's important to understand is the first candle of the 12 candle window. I know traders that were using a trailing limit order all the way down on those low bear candles so that if the market came through and hit that, they were automatically picked up into the market. They immediately put their stop at the low of the day, which was probably 15 to 20 pips, thinking that they might have a two bar engulfment, whereas they watched that candle proceed for 75 pips straight up in the air. Now, other traders are happy to watch the high, watch the high, as soon as it's broken, they're long. And again, they put their stop, whatever it is, maybe it's at the low, it could be 20 pips, it could be 25, doesn't matter. But when we are at the low of the day, that low bear candle becomes now the area where they lock that in if they're going to reverse the market. Now we're not talking about a, a pin, a blow off candle, we're talking about a market that goes one, two, three. Sometimes that low bear candle may be in the London session. They lock it in and they work on top of that heading into New York. The lowest bear candle, the highest bull candle. If I am in a strongly trending market, we have talked about heading into the 12 candle window and having a 45 minute one, two, three against the trend, I will look to short the highest bull candle. If I'm in a big up move, and we get a one, two, three down, I will be looking for a candle that engulfs that lowest bear candle to re-enter the market with the trend. Now again, we're talking about a trending market, not just getting in on an engulfment of a candle. The timing window is critical, especially when we're talking about that equities hour. So a stop on to the high with an engulfment is not what I'm looking for. I am looking for a market that's moving strongly and pulling back into the 12 candle window. 
but most importantly on our normal high and low of the day I'm looking for a high bull candle that gets broken and engulfed doesn't mean I'm going to enter there because again as we head into our 12 candle window if I have a, that first two hours as my primary focus time I'm talking about a market that potentially has already given us a peak formation so as we saw yesterday uh, gold had given us the engulfment at the end of the 12 candle window just outside of it they came down in a creeping fashion the first candle that was down we had a second candle a bull candle back into that peak formation some traders shorted it at the numbers other traders shorted the break of that candle it opened up in London and continued to move down another 25 pips but again that gave us a bias 15 minute charts, high and low of the day, structure. We're going to look at a couple of examples again of measured moves, but structure, if we're in a rectangle up top or down low, especially if the market has made lower highs, we can now take those highs and lows and extrapolate them out for a measured move. 100% expansions, I usually will target at least two on the 15 minute charts. The high and low expansions, one full expansion for the high and low of the day. Again, we're looking at what the average daily range would be. On gold, obviously, those ranges can vary, but we're talking about just structure and geometry. Round numbers, yesterday's a classic example again on gold, they expanded the range 25 up to the upper quarter above the double zeros brought it down below to the to the bottom of that double zero box taking out the low and putting in a double bottom heading into the US session so we'll look at that as well high bull low bear we want to see an engulfment of that candle now the pin hammer by itself as you can understand now we don't have we don't have a peak formation in place the only time we'll see a pin hammer or a two or three bar reversal is when we've had a market that is in blow off. There's a big difference. That can be into a trend, a 50 pip or 75 pip stop hunt from equities hour into that third hour for the reversal. But again, we will typically see a three bar pattern that forms not a happy face, but a 45 minute reversal pattern after the blow off. Three pushes and then a one, two, three, again on the pound and pound Aussie yesterday, low of the day, one, two, three, heading it right into the 12 candle window for the explosive move back through, right through the high of the day. So again, structure and measured move. We'll look at some of those examples, but start paying attention in your 12 candle window, marking off your high bull and your low bear. They will give you a ton of information. If that doesn't occur, that market probably is not done going up or down. Meaning that if you're following the high bull and you don't get that engulfment, that market probably isn't finished doing business. Now if you're outside of the 12 candle window and you get the engulfment, again, be very wary of just trading an engulfment after a breakout. We could have a market that will still go up another 25 to 50 pips for a one, two, three blow off whatever that may be, or in a strongly trending market, that could just be a normal counter trend bar, which again, if we're in an up move and I get a bear candle that engulfs outside of our 12 candle window, I may be looking to go long at the break of that candle. Different, but opportunity to re-enter an existing trend if we haven't already had a position in that market. So let's take a look at the charts again. Congratulations to the traders yesterday that nailed those trades. That's how fast it can be. Six hours creeping and moving and all of a sudden, one, two candles, 50, 75, 100 pips. So congratulations, keep up the great work. High bull, low bear, watch those levels on your charts. If they layer on top of one of those or underneath one, now we may have a bias for a, a continuation move into our 12 candle window or if they lock it in, now we want to look to see how price behaves once it goes into consolidation at that level or retests it with a weak follow through without taking out the low or the high. Stay disciplined traders, stay focused. Middle of the week, keep up the great work. I know we're going to get some huge moves. We've already had a massive move this morning on gold. 
Keep focused, keep getting better, and may the markets go with you. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, and we're looking at the pound. Uh, sorry, the British pound from yesterday and uh, Monday. So again, uh, we're talking about high bull, low bear, and again, we talked about this uh, yesterday, just about the high bull take being taken out in Asia. So again, uh, I'll just zoom this in a bit. High bull engulfed in Asia. So what that means is heading into our 12 candle window, we already have a, have a bias in place. So traders, uh, you're trading with the trend after the market has broken through Friday's low. And we talked about geometry and structure yesterday. We talked about measured moves, high, low, rectangle, high of the week uh, for the measured move down. But also you can measure the structure that you're trading on the current day, high and low, even just for a minimum target. Uh, that's more than three expansions of that geometry itself but again just looking at numbers so we're in a 50 pip range by the time that europe opens so you're looking possibly at 150 pip move that's two times that 50 pip box but again just common sense the market broke through double zeros broke through the quarter level which means that now 50 may be the most significant level it extends beyond 50 into that lower 25 pip boundary and again, if you're following this or you come to the screen in the U.S. session, we mark off our low bear. Why? Because that tells us that they potentially may have locked in the low for the day. We have our high bull and we have our low bear. Now that high bull going into Tuesday had not been broken. But the high bull from the U.S. session, okay, the reason I'm counting this bull candle and not the inside bar is because that bull candle is the solid bull candle at the high before the double inside bar. That's what I do. It's your preference, but that's my, uh, I use the large candle at the high, the inside bars. Uh, obviously, as if I'm trading that and I was looking for the break of the bar, I would follow these lows up inside and at the break of that inside double bar, I would be short this market. So again, an, an example of how you can use either a limit order. You could place a limit order to uh, at the low of that candle. Obviously, with a one-bar stop, you can put your stop in pre-programmed and your target, by the way. It doesn't get hit. It doesn't take out the high in the next candle, so I put it. I bump it up a level. We could move it up because now we're into a blow-off market that's gone vertical. We're at round numbers, and I have my high bull after a one, two, three market at that candle doesn't get hit the next candle comes off the numbers now again some traders again we've talked about using smaller time frames at peak formations i'm not going to go into that today but we will probably at some point in the next few weeks start looking at that in more detail but again placing a limit order or entering manually on the break of this if that was a trade you were looking for now again this is late in the u.s session obviously we could expect 25 to 50 before the market goes into consolidation, 25 at a minimum, but obviously possibly the first target is traders who may have been long on the close of the 15 minute bull candle at the beginning of that move. So again, just understanding is who's in the money? Who's in the money? This guy went long, they went one, two, three into the high, they've engulfed it, gone sideways, dropped it down, they wanna get, back, get this guy at least at break even, and again, heading into the next day, even looking at that trade and saying to yourself, if they break that level in Asia, one push, two push, three pushes engulfment, they may want to go right down and get this guy who's long. His bull candle, may he may have a stop at the low of the bull candle. He may have it at the bottom of the bear candle. But you see, they will make sure that they go back and get the money. So nobody gets a free lunch. You're not missing out on trades focus on mastering some basic concepts. So we're in a down move once they break back inside. I'm, I'm not trading here, but I'm just giving you some feedback on price action. We have a bull candle that's broken. In the rollover, they pull back. So if somebody shorted this candle and they have their stop above the high of that, that bull candle, okay, so again, looking at price, how it's behaving, heading into the next session, we have our high bull locked in. The market breaks this bull candle traders are in the market it continues to fall lower some traders might have shorted the second bull candle from the close again i'm not suggesting that these are 
uh, great setups. I'm just looking you looking from the perspective of who's in the market. The market comes down another 25 to 50 before we lock in our low bear. So somebody goes long in the open off the low bear. We've got shorts in the market. The market comes up one, two, three, sideways into our last candle of the first hour, and we get an engulfment of the small doji, which again we're trading in line with the short trade if traders were taking that, but we get down one, two, three. Whenever you see one, two, three on any time frame, start looking to be at break even to take profits because if this is not a measured move and it doesn't continue one, two, three after the inside bar, they engulf this and they come down one, two, three. Now this could be a measured move down. So important to either be at break even if you're in this market and you're short and they come down one, two, three and they go sideways. You definitely want to be at break even. So very important to understand that. As you can see, they went sideways and they've engulfed in line with the low of the day, the small bull and middle structure candle for a micro double bottom, micro W, for the stop hunt back up into the traders who are short. So again, getting caught inside, you're getting caught inside of a box. Again, this is the pound, so not a great example. I hope nobody's trading this in Asia in less than 25 pip box. This is not an example of asymmetrical risk reward, but it is an example of just looking at price and how it's behaving in line with the peak formation. So high bull, low bear, we draw our high highs and lows for the session. The market eventually engulfs in the gap time heading into the Europe London 12 candle window. One, two, three. Again, stop hunt, one, two, three, engulfment at the redrawn low of the day. And you'll notice anytime I see something like this, and I'll just see here, traders might not be able to see this as clear. I'll make this dark. Um, a few people mentioned they can't see the numbers. Okay, so when I, when I get something like this, even though it's the low of the day, I... I'm not looking to trade this. Okay, we've got the engulfment, pin hammer. It's inside of the numbers. So I have a strong sense of um, recognizing that even if this possibly comes back inside, you can see this is a stop hunt, but then the fast, aggressive move down to the quarter level. We're trading inside of the Asian range. I'm looking for something to move down to 25 or 50 pips outside of the range before we get a setup that works into the numbers rather than in the middle of round numbers. So we're inside of the box. This is a dead giveaway. This, this is a high probability situation that there'll be a trap. And why is that? Well, you're caught inside. So if they hit the low, they're going to be at numbers, which makes sense. But they're stop hunting on traders that have gotten in early. This is the open of the 12 candle window, one, two, three up. So one, two, three down, sideways, pin hammer, one, two, three up. Stop hunt candle, straight vertical candle, back inside, pin hammer. So again, looking traders getting jammed inside. If you're trading inside of here, inside of the high and low, you're caught inside. Projecting this high across. So again, traders are sitting in here waiting for something. I'm looking for something to come outside 25 to 50 pips outside of this range. We're sitting at median price, which is 50, inside of a double zero box. So we literally are right in the middle of a 100 pip box. And my golden rule with that is, is that I need something to come off of numbers, either on three pushes, three hours, whatever that may be. But when we're in the middle, I want this eventually to come off of numbers in one direction or the other. So again, we see the market go sideways with three pushes up, one push, two pushes, and then a one, two, three just outside of the gap time sideways and an engulfment of the high bull in our L Europe London 12 candle window. So again, just being patient and waiting. So again, we're medium price, but this is after three pushes and we get the 33. A one, two, three on the third leg, pushing up into 50, the engulfment, and then the first candle of the next hour drops down 50 pips. So again, understanding timings. This four bar structure, okay, by the time it closes and prints, forms a one hour pin bar 
at 50. This bar opens at 50 and breaks away. So even if you traded the first bar of the next hour, if you were trading in here, it's a one bar stop. Because this market, if it's an open drive, again, market profile, if you understand market profile, and this is medium price or point of control, whatever you want to call it, when that moves, it should be going at a minimum to the outside of that bracket, low of the day. But again, we have traders in the money from the close of the U.S. session, as we talked about, or the last leg in the U.S. session. The market breaks through the low of the day, comes back, engulfs, and one, two, three, at the low of the day, at the beginning, that bit, that last bear candle is at the beginning of our 12 candle window. So understanding the importance of timings, understanding that they've dropped this down 35, 25 plus through the, through the double zeros. But again, a way to monitor this, if you were looking for that opportunity, is that I would be trailing a limit order, if that is one one way, one, two, three, the market breaks the high, but I would look to get into this trade manually uh, after a one, two, three, and again, a one bar stop. So you're at the low of the day, you have a one, two, three, and um, this is incredible, but again, an example of when a market's coiled and tight and you get the stop hunt, the one, two, three, boom, an explosive move through the high of the day, you're done in 15 minutes, shut the charts off, and uh, go do something fun. So again, we're looking at the pound Aussie, just marking off your low bear high bull. So in an example like this, the market has moved from the low of the day. This is the lowest candle, it's a bull candle. So in, in my case, I will use the first hour as a significant level. And again, I'm not going to go overboard into that too much today, but the first hour gives us a high-low parameter. The market broke out of that. We obviously have bear candles in here, but the market then goes up and gives us a engulfment of a high bull in the Asian session. So we have our high bull candle, okay? And then the market drops below that. So a trader asked me recently, why did I draw a line there? We had an example of this a few weeks ago on the pound Aussie. One, two, three, sideways, engulfment with a pin doji, but then we're still sideways. This is prior to coming to our Europe London session. So to me, they've already locked in the high of the day unless they come back up and take it out, but they don't. They engulf it again inside. They've split the box. They've split the Asian range, and you'll see this a lot, so, you know, Go mark your charts up and understand high bull, low bear. Because once they lock in a higher low and they shift sideways into consolidation, we have a couple of things that are going to happen here. Not only do we have a market that's moved now down to numbers and, and, and lower and sideways, in the first candle it breaks down in line with our peak formation. Now, what we also have now here is structure. We have a big rectangle, high-low rectangle, two full expansions, gives me a minimum target down to 25. So that's a lot better than 50 pips. The point being is that once this market's in line, do not counter trend the peak formation. The high bull is in place. We stay in line with this trend. If you're not in and you want to figure out how do I get in, I trade the break of the first counter trend candle. If it, if it was a 1, 2, 3, a 1, 2, doesn't matter. I'll move my line up to the next candle. But we get a break on that first candle. It's a one bar stop. And my thesis is a minimum target. We're still looking at more than 50 pips on this trade. We're risking on this trade. High to low. High to low, this is uh, 724. So we're looking at 17, 19 pips roughly with the spread. Say 20 pips. You're risking 20. And this market, the minimum on it is 75 to 100 pips. And then what we do is we watch how price behaves as it gets to that level. Well, there's no pin. We've gone down one, two. I'm thinking at least three. The market goes sideways. Okay, so pay attention to this. Really important. This bull candle sideways at that level, at, at, at the quarter level, 
is not the end of this move. Now, shorting this bull candle after a measured move at the low of the day can get you into trouble. But what it can also do now is give you a reference point for a possible low of the day peak formation. If this was going to keep going, it doesn't close back inside of the range of that bull candle. The minimum that will go is to the high of the bull candle. But we'll talk about that later. Our low bear, high bull. But in this example, when the market comes back, we now have a low of the day possibly in place with our low bull. But now what we're looking at is how many pushes against the trend prior to the next session? One push, two pushes, three pushes heading into our 12 candle window before one, two down. And again, our, our low of the day we think might hold. Okay. The market comes back one, two in our 12 candle window. And guess where that engulfment occurs for the sell? Just below our high bull candle. So, when the market repaints highs and lows, we redraw our highs and lows, and we mark off our high bull and low bear. Now, obviously, the low of the day at this point is a bull candle, but this is after a one, two, sideways, three pin hammer. So, this is our low of the day. The market drops down, gives us a high bull structure, pushes back into it, doesn't break it. Pushes back into it, doesn't break it. And a third time, one, two, three engulfment in our 12 candle window. And you'll notice also, this is in our equities hour, second candle of our equities hour. This is an open test rejection. This is a golden trade setup. Second candle, equities hour. These traders are locked in at the high. 50 pip move down to the low of the week and the low of the day. The market goes sideways before breaking out. And again, this is the same as one bull candle, but what it does do after our little weak retest and follow through, it engulfs our low bear. So again, I use the full size lowest bear candle. This is one bull candle to me, but an example of a breakout. Obviously, other trade time frame traders are possibly in the market down low, below the quarter level. But the first place this market should revisit if they were in that trade off the bottom is the high of the U.S. session. And again, nobody gets a free lunch. They come back and pin down into traders who are long before revisiting and breaking through the high of the day. But most importantly, at any time frame, if, even if the market blows off, we mark off our low, we mark off our high. It doesn't have to be a bear candle, but you can see in this instance, we had a one, two, three, this engulfment back inside of the bull structure, and then breaking the high of that gives us a new leg up to redefine our new high bull candle. We head into the next day, again heading into Asia. I will mark off previous sessions, high bull, low bear, because again, uh, that's where there are traders who are in the markets. So if we project these across from the previous session, Again, yesterday uh, we can see that, I'll just stretch this apart. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I am not trading the pound or pound Aussie at all at the moment. I'm pretty much 100% only trading gold, but the same principles apply. One, two, three, we have shorts in the market into the beginning of the day prior to the, our Asian session 12 candle window. We're at round numbers. Whenever you see a market push through round numbers prior to the market or at the beginning of a market, you know that this market is possibly now going to revisit that, especially double zeros, because they've broken through there and gone back up. That means, again, just sticking to the number one fundamental understanding of where is the money because those are stops prior to the market being opened and then boom they go one push two push sideways inside bar pin and then first candle of the equities hour that market just continues to move 25 pips lower market gives a little pin hammer at the bottom but you'll notice again 
one, two, three, but there's no inside bowl structure there, but we do have a low bear. They engulf that, and you'll notice when they go up how they come back inside of the low bear, and that's where this can fail. So if you're long in here and you think that this is maybe going to be the bottom for whatever reason, again, I'm not suggesting that that is a trade, but I'm just giving you some insight that if that market closes back inside, now this trade is probably going to get stopped out. This is an example. If I was in the market, they came back inside. That's not a stop hunt. That's, that's closed back inside of the range. If it was a stop hunt, it would be a pin and close back up above that range. This is where I would cut a trade prior to getting stopped out if I was in the market. That's not fitting in with my thesis. I would cut that trade before it stops me out and wait to get back in. We get a one, two, three down a bull candle and then this bear candle, okay, recognize that second grab at the cash that fails to follow through. If it breaks the high of that candle, there's your one bar stop for the long trade and there's your W. Back where? To get the guy who shorted the market at the beginning of the Asian session at the, at the, either the high of the day, above the pin, wherever wherever that may go. As soon as we get a doji, again, an example of where I possibly might cut the trade if I was in this trade. But understanding one, two, three up, sideways, one, two, three down, the bull, they've hit the stops, okay, they've hit the stops, that's all they need to do. They've stopped this guy out, the first mouse, the second mouse, no, the second grab of the cash, the weak follow through, the break of the high of the bear candle at the low of the day for the long trade back up, it's a one bar stop. That bear candle is my one bar stop because if that trade's right, there's no way they should be coming back. And again, we're targeting asymmetrical risk reward. I'm risking roughly 12 pips, 13 pips on this trade for 25 minimum. So again, not my ideal. I don't normally trade pound Aussie. I'm looking for 50. You know, I'll take 25. But once again, this upper structure is broken. I'm at break even. Moves up. We get our pin doji to the high. Evidence of possibly their work at that point being done. I'm not so much worried about getting another seven, eight pips. Uh, again, I might grab the money. But again, this market now is showing two-sided trading. One push, two push, three pushes. High of the day, they break the bull candle at the high of the day. So again, don't. I'm not looking at this. I'm looking at in our session highs. Highs and lows. Now, again, if we were into the blow-off, if this market had put a peak formation in, I would be paying attention to that. But we're talking about now low of the day, low bear. High of the day, high bull. Heading into the next 12-candle window. One, two, three, four. Okay? That's the last candle of our first hour. London Open takes out the, the uh, high bull, the last candle of the first hour. So again, round numbers, they've pinned up to 25, they come back, the break of this candle, uh, traders can fight for a better price, but there's an example of where it may not come back. It may not come back. Pins down into 50, you might get 35, 45, really good traders might have been in at the numbers as it came back through the open of this candle. And again, they may have took the money with their spread off of the numbers. There's a ton of ways to trade this, but just understanding the high bull, the low bear. So again, you'll notice the break of that little doji candle, the weak follow through was the same as the low bear just prior to the stop hunt on the second leg. So either or worked and again, one bar stop. So again, the market breaks down, takes out the low of the day. We mark off our low bear. Okay. And again, I'm, the trade's over for me at this stage. I'm talking about coming back in the next 12 candle window. Once the moves happened and I have my pips, I shut it off. I'm done. I don't sit around trying to worry about, you know, getting a few more. The market comes up, pulls back, tries to follow through and pins up into traders who are short. But then we get our, again, the close back inside. Recognize the close back inside. Okay, if I'm in this trade and I'm, I'm, I'm long, and it comes back inside, okay, I'm, I'm probably going to just exit that trade right away because now I know they're coming back. One push, two pushes, three pushes down low. It's already rolling over. And then the one, two, three, okay? 
one, two, three, stop hunt, 25 pips below the London range. Again, most stop hunts are going to be 25 to 50 pips outside of the range. One, two, three, low bear, first candle of the 12 candle window, taking traders in the wrong direction. Wouldn't have expected that, but boom, this is how things can happen, how fast they can happen. 100 pips in 15 minutes, done and dusted. Some some traders I know put a 50 pip target in and they were mad. And, and my response to them was, um, hey, you made a decision in lifetime. You got 50 pips. It's all good. You know, learn from it. Learn from each trade. And again, when a market goes vertical right off the bat, you don't you don't know unless you've got a plan already in place. But again, recognizing it cleared that lower level, the last leg down, it cleared it. So that's a minimum of 50. But it went right through the high. So again, once it cleared the high of that lower structure, okay, you'll notice there's three legs down. One, two, and three. Three lower highs for the move back up, but they did it really fast and hard, and um, anything can happen. So gold, right off the bat, gave uh, an example of hitting the stops at the beginning of the 12 candle window on both sides. Obviously, we've had a couple of big days on gold. They engulfed the low bear and made a very strong 75 pip move up right off the bat. One push, two pushes, and then a one, two, three. And at the end of the one, two, three, that tried to extend into the upper quarter. Again, you'll know double zero, double zero. We're in a 100 pip box, three levels of rise. They went into the upper quarter in that extended three hour window before engulfing the high bull candle. So again, coming into our next session, creeping trend down, creeping trend down. We have a high bull engulfment. My bias is short. Market right off the bat gives us a engulfment of the pin bar bull on a two bar bear candle structure. So again, an example of where if you're not in the market already, so they went in through the previous day's high. Some traders were trading this down already. Shorter time frames, 15 minute charts, all of that, double, double zero, 75. We get a one, two, three, one, two, three pattern in an existing down creeping trend. So some traders immediately sold the break of the high, the bull candle. Okay. And again, an example of where advanced traders already know what they're looking for. Selling the high of a bull candle, the high of a bull candle, which Al Brooks, I believe, calls the H1 pattern in a down move. One push, two push, three pushes. Creeping trends will end in one of two ways. They will blow off in the direction of the trend or they will explode from a squeeze pattern in the opposite direction. This creeping trend blows off in the direction of the trend. When? First candle of the London Open. Boom. So some traders got 50 pips just as London opened. Other traders were already in the market. They had their 50 pips as London was blowing off down. And you'll notice again, our low bear was intact still, but traders who were at break even would have been stopped out if they didn't take any money off the table. And again, an example of learning to take a profit. If you're holding on to this, expecting another massive move, you know, 300 pips in gold in Asia, but as soon as you see this bar, you got to be taking profits at a minimum if you haven't taken anything out. That engulfment locks in the high of the day, especially at this timing window. Very important to understand. So again, the market pulls back. So we have a 25 pip extended move below 50 for the stop punt and then the move back up. Traders get caught going long, chasing the move, thinking this is going to be an explosive move back to the high of the day. Our low bear, all of this price action stays inside of the London high low from the first candle of the London window. So again, low bear and all this price action is inside. And they come down one, two, three and pin the low, stay down sideways and take out the low of the day. And London, we get a bull pin back up into traders who are short. And then we get our inside bar. But we also have now possibly a middle structure. This is prior to coming to our 12 candle window. 
And this is a really good example of uh, traders getting into the market in the gap time. So they've, they've got the direction right. They've got our W pattern. They get in long. And the market goes sideways for a couple of candles before resuming. And then our 12 candle window comes back to get our first mouse. Traders who get in inside, again, you're inside. You're inside of the high and low. You're, you know, you're not down low. Uh, again, I don't, none of this appeals to me in here until the 12 candle window because I can assure you 99.9% .9 of the time at the beginning of the session, if you're already in a trade, they will come back and get you. So I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. And understanding that also in this gap time, okay, if you're in this move and you want to get out before that happens or be at break even, very important to understand that. So this pin bar is a great example of traders getting caught inside of price action. If I am going to take a pin, I want something on a second leg that's come down through the low or up on a second leg through or at or to the high. Something that's showing me that they've gone up there to clear out the first mouse before I get into the market. Stop hunt down and then we get an engulfment, not quite an engulfment, but we get the reversal candle, second candle that pins up and gets all these traders that are short who are maybe in the money, right? They've just maybe gone to break even or they're looking to take profits and they pin it right away to make sure if you're holding on that they've cleaned you out. This reversal bar gives 50 pips right off the bat and again the importance of presetting profit targets. Okay, so we've locked in our low bear. Point being is that our bias is in place. We have a bias in place that they've locked in the low of the day. So I want to be looking for longs after the creeping trend down, one push, two push, three pushes down for the explosive move back at a minimum, hopefully to the high of the day. Okay. If you haven't taken profit, do you see how fast they come back? On the one minute chart, this is a 75 pip stop hunt after three levels of rise. So again, the importance of setting your targets, taking profits off the table. You know, you're thinking this is going to be a 400 pip move uh, at a minimum when they break the high. And again, you can tell from this pattern, two bars, two bars and they're not at the high yet. I'm, I'm looking for a one, two, three. I'm going to take the money. Now you could you could trail this and you can still get stopped out as you see the trailing stop gets you to break even, um, but I I put my target in the market and on a first leg I never change that rule whether it's 50 25 I'm taking the money and I'm letting the market take me out. And remember we're trading into the previous day's high at this stage. It's pulled off of it. We're working back up into it. There's a high probability or possibility we could see this market come back before coming back in the equities hour. And again, an example of where taking money and getting back in for another move back up, one, two, three. They break the high, you're at break even, uh, or taking pips, whatever that may be. Uh, it, you know, there's a lot of ways, but as soon as a level's broken, I'm either taking money off the table, uh, break even, whatever that may be, but again, typically my, my tar profit targets are programmed and I am taking the money off the table. I'm not interested in being greedy. I'm not looking for more, you know, and if I have a trailer in there, as soon as this hits the high, and again, I'll be looking at a shorter time frame to see how price behaves because we are now at the high of the day after into the equities hour. So we're in the equities hour. They're taking traders up high, possibly to suck them in, and again, 100 pip stop hunt down, getting everybody who's in the market. So high bull, low bear. Whenever you're following these markets up, and again, an example, engulfment of the third candle in the equities hour, okay, at the high of the day, 15-minute uh, bar, 50 pips. You know, you get in, you, you just sort of figuring, oh, maybe I'll see what happens. The market comes right back, and you were up 50 pips, and you didn't take anything off the table, and now you got to figure out what to do next. So I have a plan. As soon as I'm in the trade, stop goes into place, my 50-pip target, and then at any point, a quarter's broken or a fast big move, I'm either cleared out, but I'm at break even if it breaks any of these levels through here, the quarter levels, a structure level, any of that. So important, uh, learn to take a profit. 
So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Low bear, high bull, pay attention to these, especially in the timing windows at the highs and the lows of the day. Critical information. And again, we'll just look at this real quick from this morning. We had a lower double top inside of a peak formation that formed last night. So again, lower double top. Uh, again, something that Bill McLaren taught me. And the market dropped down, went sideways, and then came back underneath the double zeros again this morning. This is a gift. The market went sideways inside of the peak formation, underneath the double top, underneath the double zeros before dropping down, moving sideways. Bear pin hammer, last candle of the uh, first hour of the 12 candle window. If you weren't already in, there's an opportunity in our 12 candle window. The market moves sideways underneath the quarter level before dropping down. We get a counter trend candle inside bar and then the double inside bar. So again, we have stops all down through here. We have structure. Okay, so we've got our upper rectangle on the, the double, uh, lower double top as one, but we also have, we can measure now, even just in Asia, the high-low of the two pins. We're in an, an existing downward move where they have locked in the peak formation high bull candles. So not only do we have the one from the U.S. session, they've taken out the high bull in the first leg, the second lower double top, high bull is taken out again the smaller one I would I include this as one major um, one bull candle but again this market this is a blow off they drop down they go sideways drop down double inside bar for the explosive move we get another counter trend bar we're down low but we're sideways at the blue tracer I'm expecting an, a minimum of 25 pips and then we get the one two three sideways they come back and pin the first mouse Okay, so our, our small bull after the blow-off candle, three levels of drop. This has moved 150 pips from the double top high or more from even from the high of Asia. They've come back down inside of this, so now we may have a market that's possibly going to work back into the low in our 12-candle window for a retest of traders who are in the money. If it comes straight back up, we could see this market roll over, but if they come back into the 12 candle or the uh, low bear, we could see that move up. But if they come up here or even go up to double zeros, we could see this market push three pushes perhaps. Let's we'll draw this out. Three pushes. Oh, figure out how to use this eventually. Again, the three peaks similar to what we saw last week. We've already started to roll over. We've taken out yesterday's low. So we'll see what happens. And then the market could end up revisiting and moving lower. There are There is plenty of space on the downside from the big move up last week. But again, depending on how this market behaves, heading into our 12-candle window, we may have the low of the day locked in, and they may go back to the high. We could still see this market roll over, but we could see some big moves again today on gold. Hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Again, thanks for a ton of great feedback. Thank you for hitting the like button. Stay disciplined, stay focused. Stick to the basics. There are plenty of opportunities. Have a great trading session and may the Hi, traders, go with it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.